Hey guys, welcome back. Jill Brunsman, insurance broker to the stars. Today, my thoughts on the Burrow of Duncannon versus Splashwire MSP claim. Now, as we go through this, it doesn't look like there was an actual lawsuit filed. It was just a claim made by the Burrow and a subsequent settlement there. So a lot of this, we just have to go off news reports from pinlive.com um, and try and extrapolate some interesting little tidbits of knowledge from that. Now, what actually happened here? It looks like the Burrow suffered a ransomware attack in April of 2020. And they were forced to pay more than $40,000 to the bad guys. The borough council sought to recoup that $43,000 from Splashwire's insurance company. So it sounds like they made a claim against the insurance company. It doesn't actually look like this was litigated in court, but it still was a claim against Splashwire's insurer. Now, borough officials at the time were taken aback by this because they were under the impression um, that the company had already provided them with adequate backups and security. That discrepancy had undoubtedly been part of negotiations over the past year. Um, I think what we can kind of learn from that is, you know, maybe Splashwire should have always offered an additional level of security. Um, maybe there was a false sense of security at the borough, uh, whether rightly or wrongly, that had been put there by Splashwire. Maybe that was part of it. Maybe Splashwire wasn't pushing hard enough on the borough to say, hey, um, I know you wanted X, Y, Z. Here are some other things we think you should be doing. Check yes or no. And of course, there's contractual obligations here. It's a borough, so they have to put this out for bid. So there, there's a lot of kind of issues moving around here. Now, more info. It wasn't the borough's computers that were directly hacked in the cyber attack, according to the news report. It was Splashwire that got hacked, compromising Duncannon's files and backups. So now it looks like Splashwire has egg on their face because they were hosting the data. Um, you know, I think there's probably a misconception. If you were to go back there, I would say that the borough didn't really understand or the council running the borough probably doesn't understand the difference between data holders and data owners and what that means. But nonetheless, moving forward, uh, one of the borough council members say they didn't just get our info. They got access to other clients, too. So it looks like this was... Um, a pretty painful experience for Splashwire. The Burrow initially thought it could use the backups at Splashwire to recover its computers without paying the ransom. That proved not possible, and the Burrow ended up paying the hackers twice to free its account. So that's kind of a weird statement there, but probably what happened was, um, you know, they said, hey, uh, you have to pay us within the next X number of days, or uh, we are going to double the ransom amount. So it's probably like 40 grand or so to begin with. Uh, I'm sorry, 20 grand or so to begin with. And then they tried to restore from backups. They didn't have that timeline. So then it could be possible that the ransom actually doubled because of that. Now, almost done here. Uh, the news report goes on to say, after everything was restored, Splashwire beefed up the borough's security and recommended a more thorough service package for the future. It is now actively testing the borough's systems to quickly identify problems and threats. You know, I'd argue like, hey, this is something that we can take a lesson here uh, from Splashwire and say, hey, this is something we should do before an event occurs, right? Consider reaching out to those clients, offering those additional security measures before something happens. So that way, you know, you as an MSP, you have a little bit of additional defense there. You can say, hey, we, we offer these additional services, even if you know that they're not going to take them, even if you know that they don't have the funding to do that, you know, still offer those additional levels of service is, is really kind of a defense, right? Think of that as defense in depth for your own MSP moving forward. The company is still the borough's IT provider. Splashwire had a three-year contract with Duncannon. It expires at the end of 2021. The borough will put its IT services out for bid again. Kirkhoff said Splashwire would be welcome to bid since they are most familiar with the borough systems. I mean, just kind of take that at face value. There could be all kind of maneuvering in the background. Uh, who really knows if Splashwire um, is even going to want to do these systems in the future? Who knows if, you know, the borough just doesn't have the funding allocated to adequately protect their system there? Why didn't they have multiple backups? Questions we will probably know, never know the answer to. Now, some color commentary here. Who was at fault when all was said and done, well, likely both parties, right? You could probably put some element of blame on both parties here, um, as well as obviously the guys that hit them with ransomware. So that would be the third party. Now, allegedly the backups at Splashwire didn't work. So, you know, in this case, it sounded like from the news report, it was just a single backup. 
Um, we all know, you know, really try and get those multiple backups, three to one backup strategy, something additional there, uh, just in case the first backup actually gets uh, hit with ransomware. Did Splashwire push hard enough for redundant backups? Another question we will never know, but something that you could take on board at your own MSP. Was the council actually engaged with cybersecurity? If I had to bet a million dollars, I'd say probably not as much as they should be. I mean, I'm sure they are now. Uh, so they've touched the stove. They know the stove is hot. So now they're probably very much engaged in that. But that's something where Splashwire could have been, you know, ideally sending out, say, monthly newsletters, if they weren't already, um, to all of their clients saying, hey, these are some of the threats, you know, as well as offering that additional level of service that we talked about before. Were they warned continuously? I really doubt that happened. Um, did Splashwire warn of these threats? Um, I'm sure they did to some degree. Could they have done more than that? Likely they could have. Um, you know, kind of moving on here. What about the insurance side of all of this? Well, let's talk about some of those insurer settlement con considerations because it sounds like Splashwire's insurance company settled with Duncanon. What would some of the considerations be on the insurance company side? Well, the jury, the jury is likely to be composed of borough residents, uh, depending upon the venue requirements within the contract. I'm sure it was in the borough itself. So now you just immediately have what would you really consider like a hostile jury, not saying they're coming out with pitchforks, but instantly would be dubious of any claim that Splashwire uh, would have had in their own defense there. It's often just cheaper to, uh, to settle than to litigate. So you can see here, this was a $43,000 issue. If this actually had to go to trial and they were gonna litigate it out that way, um, easily hundreds of thousands of dollars could have been expended there to try and argue a case in front of, you know, I probably non-technical people in a hostile environment to begin with. Splashwire likely made mistakes. So it sounded like somehow they came in through Splashwire system. It's really kind of vague there. So you could take that a million different ways. Uh, nothing is to say that the journalist actually knows anything about uh, systems administration, cybersecurity, any of that, but we'll just take it at face value. You could also argue that Duncanon, they made similar mistakes, right? I would say if we were to go back and we were to look at the budget, um, because, you know, I have worked on cyber insurance policies for boroughs before um, in various municipalities. You know, generally they are really strapped for cash given just the sheer volume of information they have at their fingertips. So I'm sure Duncanon now is probably putting more of an emphasis on cybersecurity, but even really basic things at some of these municipalities, and I'm not saying Duncanon did this, but other municipalities I've seen, even basic things like security awareness training, uh, 2FA, MFA, uh, redundant backups, at least according to the municipalities I've spoken to, you know, that's just something where they're like, oh my God, that would cost so much. Um, so it really kind of makes you wonder as an MSP, you know, definitely start screening those clients because we're going to see, you know, this is probably not going to be a fun time for splash water getting insurance moving forward. So with that, really kind of start screening those clients. Don't be afraid, you know, if you've got a municipality out there or some organization and they just don't have the funds to deal with cybersecurity and they think that, you know, maybe one backup and antivirus is going to do it all for them, maybe the money is just not worth it. Now, why didn't Duncanon have cyber insurance? That's really what I was thinking the entire time here. So I would argue that you know, every MSP needs to start contractually requiring their clients to carry cyber insurance. That should be a serious consideration for all of you watching this video. Why didn't the municipality have cyber insurance that could have paid for this anyways? That's a serious question there because cyber insurance is still really affordable. Definitely something that Duncanon should have had. It wasn't mentioned in any of the news reports that I read. And will Splashwire's insurance renewal go smoothly moving forward? I really doubt it because it sounds like they have multiple claimants here. There were probably other businesses, according to the news report, that were also implicated with this. So Splashwire could have a very expensive insurance renewal moving forward. And we're already in a marketplace now where a lot of companies, a lot of insurance companies are just not offering tech e o insurance for MSPs at all anymore. They've just exited the market because the risk is so high. So this is something that's really going to be kind of like the albatross around Splashwire's neck 
as they move forward with their insurance renewals. And it looks like they've got a bunch of other client issues that they're going to have to deal with here. Now with that, um, you know, a lot of what we saw here, a lot of what we talked about here, there are some defense in depth measures on the liability side. I made a video specifically for MSPs. I'm going to link to that above. It's this video right here. Six hard truths that MSP owners need to hear right now. Um, one of those is you need to contractually require cyber insurance for clients. So with that, if you enjoyed this video, like, share, comment, subscribe. Uh, this is Damage Control Cyber Insurance Compliance, 500 pages of cyber insurance and regulatory side. That is where you can download it for free. And with that, stay safe.